Well, good morning again. I think it's one of the hazards of broadcasting live on the internet on Facebook that uh, what it does is sometimes conspire to cut you off. I can't always tell actually when this thing's beginning and sometimes it ends when it shouldn't. I think yesterday was the, the router that switched off and I was left without the internet. But actually you only missed, I think you only missed the last 20 seconds. Because I've been talking about the ways in which God makes his message known and in verse 8 of chapter three, Ephesians chapter 3 he talked about preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ to the Gentiles. In verse 9 it talked about uh, uh, bringing things to light, the mystery being brought to light. And then in verse 10 it says God's intent uh, was that through all this, through the church, his many-sided, many-coloured wisdom should be made known. And it's that last point that's the most surprising and probably uh, deserves a bit of extra thought, really, because actually, if you think about it, that God would display his wisdom through the church, uh, would you do it this way? You know, through that rather flawed and uh, sometimes divided, no, often divided body that we call the church, is that the way you'd make your wisdom known? You know, sometimes actually uh, the church is all too human as far as we can see, and there's doesn't appear to be much of the divine in it at all. But uh, actually, no, Paul says this is the way God does it. Because God had a, a plan for a salvation. It says in verse 11 of uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, he describes it this way. Uh, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. He has this great purpose. And uh, that's his plan that he's going to bring about. And he's going to show it, actually, through the continued existence and growth of the church, the people who acknowledge him as Lord. Uh, again, with the word church, don't get hung up on ecclesiastical institutions. Um, it's rather his people that make up those institutions. And God does it this way, doesn't he? We've seen it in, um, in Ephesians chapter 2, where God takes rebels and makes them into his own people. Uh, chapter 2 describes them as uh, being dead in sin and he brings them to life. He describes their unbelief being turned to faith and love through his grace. He talks about people who are following Satan's way, being turned into uh, God's own people who are now seated in heaven with Christ. And God does all of this through Christ. Um, but he doesn't just save them individually. He makes them and molds them into a new humanity, a new people uh, in the world or reconciled to God, united to Christ, and therefore united to each other. That's the miracle. That's the, uh, uh, that's the mystery that is being made known. This body that transcends time and geography uh, is united across all of history uh, and around the world. And God will point to that to say this is where his wisdom is displayed. Not that people will see it that way, if you think about what uh, historians will see when they look back at, uh, well, at this period now, what will they see? Well, of course, they'll see the, the movements and existence of the great nations, of these uh, vast bodies that span the globe. And uh, that, that's what they will record, whereas God will point to uh, the group that transcends all the nations. Uh, that uh, unites people across borders and across tribal divisions and hatreds. And uh, it's hidden from view. It's not counted for, for much in many people's view, but it's God's body of people across the world. Uh, historians might look at the decline and fall of various empires over history, and even now the, the great commercial empires that are struggling in the pandemic. Um, they will record them, but God will show a body of people uh, who have um, transcended time and have defeated the attempts to destroy this body. Um, he will say, he, he looks at a, the church as a body that is uh, people Christ is building and he's promised to build and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And maybe historians will look at great people and their deeds, the presidents, prime ministers, uh, the rulers. Um, but God will, in fact, point to a bunch of people who are not known. Uh, Paul said when he described the church in 1 Corinthians, um, you're a people who are really nothing, a bunch of nothings, not many great, not many rich. In fact, you don't count. 
but actually you count because God has chosen you and God has brought you together. Uh, this is the church, and this is how God makes his wisdom known. Now, I wonder what your impression of the church is. If you're like most people, you have mixed feelings. You know what it should be. You also know what it is. And you know it too well to be rosy uh, and uh, or starry-eyed about it. There's too many problems. Well, Paul wasn't starry-eyed about the church. And um, if you read his New Testament letters, you'll see that the churches he dealt with were not problem-free by any stretch of the imagination. But he says, this, this is God's church. This is the way in which uh, God makes his wisdom known to the world by saving these people and bringing them together. Uh, this is his wisdom in action. And he challenges you to say, well, don't you want to be part of that? Well, yeah, I do. I'm happy to be part of that. And uh, we'll consider a bit more about it, what it means for us tomorrow. We'll see you then.